today we're gonna to learn how to create glowing social media icons here in Photoshop. So let's get started. What's cooking? My name is Brennan from BeWillCreative.com and on this channel we love to talk all about Photoshop and photo editing. So if that sounds like something that you'd be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. Now today we're gonna to talk about a cool effect using social media icons and making a glow effect that makes it appear as if they're real life and floating in front of your subject. This is a surprisingly easy effect to create, but it does require some very specific steps. So this tutorial is gonna walk you through all of the steps and so you can start creating this effect in no time. So let's hop into Photoshop and see how it's done. So here in Photoshop, we have two images to work with. Of course, our social media icon that I got from Vecdeasy and our portrait photo that I've downloaded from Unsplash. Now, if you wanna follow along with this tutorial, I'll leave a link for both of these images down below. Now, the first thing that we'll do is reposition our social media icon into the area that we want it to sit. So grabbing our move tool by pressing V, I'll drag this up above my subject's head and just rescale it accordingly like so. Now to add a glow effect to this icon, we have to do some blur effects behind it and then a blur effect in front of it. So to do that, we'll duplicate our social media icon by pressing Command or Control J, and then I'm gonna rename this layer to Background Blur and drag it behind my social media icon. The next, I'll go up to my blend mode and change it down to screen, and I'm going to next add a Gaussian Blur by going to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. I'm gonna just set a relatively small radius, something like 25 pixels area, and click OK. I'm then gonna repeat this process a bunch of times. So pressing Command or Control J on that background blur layer, I'm gonna once again go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, increase that to about double, so around 50 or 60, and then again, Command or Control J, Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. This time we'll crank it all the way up to the 150 range, click OK. And then one more time, we'll go Command or Control J, Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. This time we're gonna crank it way up to like 250 or 300 pixel area, and then click OK. So now that adds a nice glow behind our icon, but if you notice, it still doesn't look very good on the front. So we'll have to add another glow to help it all blend together. First, I'm gonna shift click all of my background blurs, press Command or Control G to group them, and I'll rename this to Background Blurs. Clicking on my main social media icon, I'll press Command or Control J once again, a very reoccurring theme for this process. And I'm gonna change the blending mode from normal down here to overlay. This time I'm gonna add a Gaussian blur once again by going filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. But I'm not gonna go too crazy with it, just something nice and subtle around the 25 to 45 pixel range. Something like that looks great for me and I'll click OK. Now I'll shift click both of these layers and I'll go Command or Control G. I'll call this group to Front Blur and then I'll shift click both these groups, press Command or Control G and call this to Social Icon. Now we've created the glow effect for our social media icon, but there's no point in having a glow effect if it doesn't blend with the rest of your photo. So to make the rest of our photo blend in, we're gonna darken the background, make it feel a little bit more nighttimey, and then we're gonna add some cool red lighting effects onto our subject's hair and on our face. So the first thing we'll do is duplicate our background layer so we can separate our subject from the background. So pressing Command or Control J, and I'll call this layer to Subject, and leave this other layer set to background. With my subject layer selected, I'll go up to my properties panel and I'll go to select subject. You can use whatever selection tool you would like to separate your subject from the background, but since you don't have to be super specific for this, this is one of the easiest ways you can go about it. With your selection active here, just go and add that to a layer mask like so, and now we can start to individually edit the background from the subject. This is gonna make life a lot easier going forward, especially with the color light adjustments. First, clicking on the background layer, let's darken the background with an exposure adjustment layer, bringing down that exposure value until the background looks nice and dark, something like this, you don't have to go too crazy with it. And then now we wanna do the same thing for the subject, except we have to make a clipping mask this time. So clicking on the subject layer, once again, adding an exposure adjustment, we'll add a clipping mask by clicking this icon right here, and now it will only affect our subject layer. Bringing down that, like so, we want to basically blend in the exposure of her lower half with the background, that looks pretty good to me. And to help make it look realistic as if there's a light source coming from our icon, we're going to mask out 
the upper area of this exposure adjustment. With our brush tool, pressing B, setting black to our foreground color, we can just go and mask out this upper area like so around her face. And then I'll change my brush opacity down to something like 50% and I'll add a little more around her shoulder like so. So this is gonna work very well to our advantage when we add the color adjustment later on. Now with all of this done, let's go ahead and start adding the red highlight onto our subject. We can do this with a very simple method via the hue saturation adjustment layer. So creating a new hue saturation adjustment, we'll then click colorize, which is just going to apply a single hue over our whole photo. Now, since we don't want it to apply to the entire image, we only want it to apply onto our subject, we're gonna copy this layer mask onto our hue saturation layer. So holding the alter option, clicking on that layer mask and dragging it up to our hue saturation adjustment, it will now only affect our subject. Now you might be wondering why we're not using a clipping mask again, but the reason is, is it will help with the exposure and color adjustments that we'll do to the whole image later on. So accessing our colorize here, I'm going to select a color that's gonna match somewhat with the icon here. So in this case, the red. So I don't wanna to go too crazy with it, but something that matches up pretty good, like this. And now I don't want her entire body to look red. So one of the best ways to blend in color is with the blend if sliders. And if you're not familiar with the blend if sliders, I'll leave a link to a tutorial all about them down below. But in the meantime, just double click on that hue saturation layer. And right here is your blend if sliders. And using the this layer slider, will bring down the highlights like so. And then once you start seeing them disappear, it will hold alter option to separate that point and we can add a feather to that adjustment. And then we'll do the same thing with our shadows, holding alter option, dragging up just a little bit. We don't wanna go too crazy because there are some dark areas in our hair that we wanna make sure stay red. So using our blend if sliders, it makes a huge difference of how those colors blend in with our subject. I'll click okay. And now I don't want it to affect her entire body. So I'll just click on that layer mask, grab my brush tool and painting with black, I'm just gonna mask out this lower section here so it doesn't have any of that red, like so. The next thing that we'll do is start to go through and add actual color onto her hair. So creating a new layer, I'm gonna actually add this into a group by pressing Command or Control G, and then I'm gonna rename this layer to Basic Red. Selecting any kind of red hue that's similar to this like icon here. This is gonna be a general purpose red highlight on her hair. So with my brush tool selected in that nice red color, I'll set my opacity to 100% and I'll just paint over the area of her hair that's nearby the icon. To help it just blend straight to our subject, we'll once again duplicate our subject layer mask by holding alter option, click and drag up onto our group and let go. And now that's going to apply that layer mask onto our group and every layer that we put inside of it. With that basic red selected, I'm gonna change the blending mode from normal down here to overlay, and then I'll bring down the fill to zero and just add it back in accordingly until I see something that I'm happy with. Something like that looks pretty good to me. And now we can go through and do that a couple more times with lighter colors. So I'll create another new layer. I'll call this middle red. And I'll select a slightly lighter red color like this. This is gonna represent sort of a brighter highlight. And now I'll go through and do the exact same thing as before, but just a little bit less broadly. So now it's just on the top of her head rather than around the sides and such. I'll then go to change the blending mode again to overlay and adjust the fill slider accordingly. For the last color, I'll once again add a new layer. I'll call this to light red. And I'm pretty much going to select a nearly whitish pink color. And this time I'm just gonna go right along the outer edge of her hair as kind of like a rim light to match the icon like so. Change the blending mode from normal down here to overlay. And now we have a complete highlight that makes a huge difference on her head. Now with all of this said and done, we have a pretty good thing going, but let's start to add some overall color adjustments to make the whole photo feel a little more nighttimey. To do that, we'll add a new color balance adjustment layer, and then we'll just increase the mid-tones blue value, maybe add a, just a touch of red, and then going to the shadows, we'll do the same once again, adding some blues and cyans, like so. This just gives it a more stylized look. And then to finish things off, we'll go to my curves adjustment, drag that up just a little bit, and drag down the shadows. And now we have a nice highlight around our subject. She's separated from the background, it looks nighttimey, and of course, we have a glowing social media icon. 
So that is how to create a glowing social media icon and also edit the rest of your photo to blend in with that icon. There is a lot of steps in this process, but it is relatively simple once you get the hang of things. This is a really fun effect that you can apply to any type of photography from landscapes to portraits to photos of your dog, it doesn't really matter. It's a fun thing that you can try and practice with. So if you enjoyed today's tutorial, make sure to hit that like button and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more videos just like today. Anyways guys, that's all I have for you for today. Again, my name's Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.